Mahara Sinclair is a former college teacher and a current retired boomer or Zoomer. She encourages other boomers or Zoomers to follow her advice to laugh, scratch, quit work and enjoy life. She says you don't need millions to go bigger and broaden your horizons. It is my pleasure to welcome Mahara Sinclair to Studio 4 to tell us more with her The Laughing Boomer book. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, so you say, in essence, that uh, retirement is a state of mind, not necessarily a state of money. Right. There are millions of people who are doing all sorts of wonderful things in this world, but they're not necessarily the, the typical things that require you to have a home and a large um, circle of, mm -hmm. of activities in sure. your hometown. Why did you do it? How did you do it? Well, what, what we did is about three years ago, we determined to sell our home. We sold our home in Vancouver, and we put, sold a lot of our stuff, quite a bit. You know, most of it, we got one bed and one Chesterfield, mm -hmm. downsizing from a three-bedroom home, and we put it all in storage. And we uh, arranged with the BC Medical to be able to travel for two years and continue to be on the medical plan. Smart. And uh, off we went. And we did it fairly uh, quickly and serendipitously. We didn't really plan until we were actually on the road. We flew to South America and went from there. So freeing. Totally. It takes guts to do it, as you know. It does take guts, and that's what most people say. They're afraid, like they're in love with their, their you know, chairs and, and their mm -hmm. tables and their mm -hmm. wall decors. <laughs> right, but you go back to the future in a sense, because right. uh, I don't know if you were a hippie, but uh, we used to travel around in the... Uh, little Volkswagen van and free totally. as the breeze and didn't have much. Totally, and we met literally thousands of young people, right, you know, uh, finishing university, before university, Israelis coming out of the army who are doing just exactly what uh, what's that and having a fabulous time. And how many hours uh, did you log, uh, or how many years? Two years? Uh, three years. <laughs> three and years. we came back to Vancouver once a, a year for about a month, a month and a half, and um, we traveled to about 46 countries, uh, wow. most continents. I uh, haven't hit Antarctica yet, but most mm -hmm. other continents. Right. But so. didn't George, your husband, right? Uh, Ken. Ken. Yeah. George is her husband. I'll get it right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but someone had a heart attack. Yes. Uh, and very fortunately enough, mm -hmm. just um, we'd been traveling in the U.S. and uh, we'd gone on a cruise from Chile to Panama, and he'd been eating half a pound of bacon a day. <laughs> <laughs> Great. traveled through the U.S., mm -hmm. arrived in Vancouver, and because we had advised them that we would be coming back within our two-year time frame, yeah, had a heart attack in Vancouver. Dear. Very lucky. But that is what you have to do, right? Yes. It's important if people yes. are going to follow. Correct. Your, yeah, if you want steps. to stay in the Canadian health system, you have to write them in advance and advise them, and you have a two-year time frame, uh, and you continue to pay your medical premiums and everything. And then when you walk back into Canada, you're, uh, you have to advise them a month in advance when you're coming home. Right. Then you're on the health system. Otherwise, you would have a three-month delay, okay. which in our case would have been disastrous. Not good. Yeah. So uh, somebody wrote, travel makes you more of who you are. And I think yes. you found that. Yes. We were com both completely surprised. For example, we didn't realize what environmentalists we were until we go to these countries where people are so disrespectful mm. of their environment. I didn't know I loved architecture and urban planning, and my husband is clearly more of a foodie than he ever thought he was. Really? Yes. What did he do before? He was a broker, stockbroker. So stockbroker. Yeah, and I was and a university. You're yeah. a university teacher. And yeah, yes. Music yeah. and yes. all of that. Yes. And uh, were there pensions? Um, so you can rely on something? Uh, small pensions. Small not pensions. Huge. Yeah, no, not huge pensions. Um, so some of it's the um, sale of the house. And also remembering that a lot of countries in the world are a lot less expensive than Canada. That's so true. Yeah. And less is more. Totally. Do, totally. do you feel freer because you did that? Oh, completely. And when you can live in an, another city that's really quite lovely, like we lived in Buenos Aires for just, we're there mm -hmm. for six months. It's very lovely. We met a circle of friends and um, enjoyed the food and the, the big city entertainment and the music and the tango and mm -hmm. uh, bird watching throughout Argentina. And really, for much, much cheaper than you could live in Vancouver. Sure. So why not? But before you took off, uh, mm -hmm. did you uh, have a goal pie? S surely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that uh, when I write in my book about the goal pie, there's six, six or eight different areas that most people focus on. And of most of the people we've talked to, travel seems to be the big 
goal. It's been uh -huh. mine since those hippie days. I've wanted to see the world, and sure. it was really uh, sort of an underlying goal for my whole life. And I had done some, but now you know this goal, to some large degree, has been uh, fulfilled because right. we've seen so many countries. And it's no been kidding. But wonderful. goals like what? Like uh, get well, fit, yeah. stop smoking. <laughs> so most people have goals in six or eight areas. They right. have them in health for one and retirement is a fabulous time because many people aren't necessarily as fit as they'd like to be and really your life is about your health. Mm -hmm. Health is wealth. If you don't have your health. Right. So, so health, one of your messages is go now. Go now. Why you can still go. Right. Well, you know, there's three stages of retirement. Go, go go slow and no go. Mm -hmm. And the big difference between, say, when you're 30 or 40, of course, people can have things happen at any age, but most people are way better, um, in, in way better health and much fitter at 60 than they are at 90. For sure. So if you want to climb up to Machu Picchu or walk mm -hmm. around Petra or go through the Amazon jungle and do all these things, do it in your 50s and your 60s. And then when you're 90, you can arrive at the doorsteps of Paris and enjoy that, but it's a much milder, calmer Exactly, experience. just uh, sip a cafe au lait si, and yes. have a little baguette. Yes. And that's it. Oui, oui. And, and let somebody <laughs> else do the walking. Yes. But the biggest expense for you, is it the transportation part of electronics? What is it? Credit cards? Um, the biggest, ex well, the biggest overall expense for the first year, we bought round the world tickets, were, which were about $5,000 each, but it mm. took us, um, if you'd like to hear the itinerary, Quito, Rio, Buenos Aires, Sydney, uh, in India, China, Istanbul, uh, uh, Amman, Jordan, Madrid, and back to Quito, all mm. for five thousand dollars. So, mm. really, <laughs> yeah, really, you know, really, for five thousand. Five thousand for the air, and then we did some adventure travel trips, which were pretty um, well, definitely adventure travel versus touring travel, sitting on a bus. They were hiking every day, so we went sure. to uh, India on a you know uh, bus, public transportation, Turkey. Morocco and um, uh, uh, Egypt, Jordan. We did those with groups because we felt they were a little bit, m you know, more difficult. Mm -hmm. But they were mostly young people and mostly fairly adventuresome travel. Not again, not the typical right. tour bus travel, but mm -hmm. walking and hiking. And sure, doing and, uh, and uh, riding really camels. taking the city in. But to be able to live someplace for six months, you get to know the people, the totally. culture, the yeah. language. How many languages do you speak? I just speak Spanish a little bit. Not, oh. I mean, enough to, you know, I mm -hmm. I manage. <laughs> and of course, studied French in school, so it does make a right. difference. But and uh, did you miss working? I do actually. I or like do to you work. miss working? I, uh, yeah, and I so I had I had written my book, but then I re-edited it, and I um, then the whole process of publishing and you know doing the whole distribution process. So yeah, I um, I actually still like working, uh, and mm -hmm. it's surprising that I do. But we've met also lots of digital nomads on the road. Oh, I bet who are working, mm -hmm. generally have some financial background, but are financial. So sustenance, but are still working, making money on the road, and it's a fabulous way to live because they, they you don't need to be in your hometown if no. you're a, a, a digital person. And you said your husband was a broker. Yeah. So he plays so the So he can play the market. Totally. We like that. Yeah. Especially if he hits big. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So and another trip, another day. Exactly. So. What were the challenges for you to just get used to it? Well, um, some of the challenges, of course, are... Um, the planning, because we didn't plan really, so mm. eventually the planning, it became quite a lot of work. And so that's, and we met people who were tired because they'd spent so much time planning. So you have to really learn to be a bit serendipitous and just learn to relax and let go. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's initially, you know, well, you know, what are we going to do here and there? So you just have to say, well, it'll evolve. And as you get to a place, if you don't know what's in the place, don't, don't worry. Every city has mm -hmm. its tourist attractions and its, and its things available. So that whole point of being serendipitous is a bit important because you can't plan a, a year around the world trip. It's, I mean, exactly. for me, exactly. And impossible. some people just are not serendipitous, you know. Right, right. There's and a word for them, but so, we won't say yeah, it on right. television. But well, yeah, you have to go with the flow. <laughs> you have to go bit. with the flow. Yeah. And if you don't go with the flow, don't travel. Right. It's well, too hard. Or do a different type of travel. You know, I Perhaps. mean, there are some people who, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to be on a hundred day round the world cruise ship, well, then. You know, everything is nice and stable. Taken and taken care can, of. And sure. I mean, that's great. And we've done quite a few cruises because they're, especially repositioning cruises, are amazing bargains. They and, sure are. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of fun, and you meet different people, and we use it almost as a relaxation. Like, we're on this repositioning mm -hmm. cruise for six And days. you feel safe, and you don't have to pack and unpack. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Uh, however, I have to say, 
I've only been on a couple of cruises, but when I get off mm -hmm. the big ship, mm -hmm. I want to stay where I am. Uh, they so have to kind of drag me back to the ship because yeah. you get into a lovely place, a sand barts or right. someplace like that. You yeah. say, I just like to stay here, stay but there. you can't no. because the big ship goes away. That's true. Yes. That's true. You'd have to fly home. Yeah. But cruising, I know a lot of people love. Love For sure. Uh, yeah, and so we've that just whole done lifestyle. So whatever floats your boat, really. Really, yeah. I mean, we've ridden on camels in Egypt and Africa and Jordan and slept in tents and slept on in trains with a second-class train in India with eight other people all around us and right. crying babies and, you know, mm -hmm. quite uncomfortable, you know, situations. But really, that's what makes it rather than just living in a five-star hotel. If you want to go from five-star hotel to five-star hotel, for one, you have to be fairly wealthy. Sure. You know, oh, you do. And I have friends that only do that. And they, great. They're, you know, they have two duvets and a Fairmont hotel and a, and a fine drink, and that's it. That's and, their travel, and, and it's okay. Totally. If you've got yeah. cabillions, you can do that. Yeah. Or if you have cabillions, you can... Uh, uh, ride on buses in Mexico, why not? Right, and I mean, we met many people doing all sorts of things. You know, if you're climbing up Machu Picchu, if you if you want to climb it, you have to climb it, and you can't be sitting in your five-star no. hotel. And, yeah, totally. You know. What do you want us to get from this? How do you want us to use the Laughing Boomer? Well, um, the book is really looking at your um, personal interests, your values, your personality, your um, spouse's values, mm -hmm. personality, your finances, um, a big one on home and possessions, about really stop focusing on home and possessions so much and, and start thinking about your life is not about things but about experiences. Right, yeah, sell and the car, sell health. the art, sell the house, yeah. sell the furniture, keep the bed. Yeah, well, you can, you can <laughs> Maybe go back. Maybe not. Yeah, you can go back and, and buy new furniture. You can go back mm. and, um, of course, you're going to keep you know, your photograph albums and, right. you know, your children's sure. mementos, you know. but Let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> but <laughs> Maybe really, not. Who would want at, to buy them? At the end of your life, what are you looking at? You're looking mm. at uh, a life that you've lived to the fullest, that you've expressed your values, mm. you've given back in some way, you've cared for others and for things, sure. you have a broader perspective, you feel like you're a citizen of the world. Right, and you die all worn out. Yeah. Isn't that great? Totally. Rather than too soon. Totally. Much better alternative, I yeah. think. Oh, totally. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Have more fun. Thank Retired you. Retired and inspired. Uh, the Laughing Boomer, Retire from Work, Gear Up for a Living is about travel and freedom and relocation, health, finances, options. Mahara Sinclair.